Well, so today we're going to discuss about monopolistic competition and oligopoly. In my last two video sets, uh, we discuss monopoly and a perfect competition. So this is the third type of a market and it's a hybrid market in which we can find out some characteristics of a perfect competition or a competitive market uh, as well as a monopoly. So let's see. Uh, uh, I divide this whole chapter into four parts. Uh, so in the first part, we're going to focus on only uh, the definition of a monopolistic competition and how the um, uh, firm in a monopolistically competitive market decide the quantity and uh, uh, they determine the price. Uh, although they follow a very same uh, rule like a monopolist decide uh, the quantity and the price. Uh, let's see and we also compare in this part uh, the uh, comparison between a monopolistic competition as well as uh, the perfect competition or a competitive. So how we define the monopolistic competition or a monopolistically competitive market? A uh, market in which firms can enter freely. So it means free uh, exit, uh, entry and exit is free. Uh, each producing its own brand. So every firm in this market is producing its own brand. It means that firm has a monopoly over its own brand uh, or a version of a differentiated products. The main characteristics of this type of market as compared to a competitive market is uh, differentiated product. So every firm has its own, uh, uh, although they are very close substitute to each other, uh, but it's a differentiated. So for example, like a, uh, if you look at the toothpaste, Colgate, Sensodyne, so these are the different products although they all are toothpaste but uh, they have their own name and they have their own brand and that's the reason they charge also different prices then comes the another uh, hybrid type of a market is an oligopoly uh, oligopoly is close to the monopoly because uh, in this type of a market the sellers are very few markets in which only a few firms compete uh, with one another and entry by new firms is impeded in the sense by the by the existing firms they create such environment that the new firms can not enter although there is no legal binding that the new firms cannot enter uh, but uh, they impeding the uh, way for the new entrants to enter into the market uh, in this oligopoly market there is a possibility that those uh, few firms can join hand together uh, and make a cartel and that's cartel uh, is situation uh, in, in which some or all firms explicitly collude, uh, coordinate prices and output level to maximize joint profit. The objective of making this cartel uh, is to maximize their profit uh, by behaving like a monopoly or a close to monopoly. So this is the way that uh, we define these uh, three different types of market. Or <clears throat> so. Uh, the making of a monopolistic competition, how the monopolistic competition is different than uh, a perfect competition or a competitive market. A uh, monopolistically competitive market has two key characteristics. The first one is uh, firms compete by selling differentiated products. So that is the, as I mentioned before, this one is a important point to note, differentiated product. Uh, products are differentiated and highly substitutable, although they are substitutable. That's not, these are not the product uh, which has no substitute. No, uh, there is, uh, there is, uh, uh, these are the products which are uh, uh, very close to each other, uh, but they have their own brands and they differentiate it with, uh, with their some uh, additional uh, attributes or additional characteristics or uh, additional uh, specifications. So they, they, they differentiate it. Uh, uh, another but not uh, perfect substitutes. In other words, the cross price elasticities of the demands are large but not infinite. So they are large uh, cross price elasticities but not infinite means not unlimited. So there is a free entry and exit. So that is the second characteristics of a uh, monopolistically competitive market, free entry and exit. So it is relatively easy for a new firms to enter the market with their own brands for existing firms to leave if their products become unprofitable. So a uh, market is free, uh, anyone can enter if they're making profit or if they have a opportunity to make profit. 
uh, and uh, those uh, firms uh, whose products are no more in, uh, in demand, they can leave the market as well. So uh, how, the, uh, how they determine that which, uh, how much quantity each firm has to produce, it all depends on the demand function or a marginal revenue function of that market. Uh, of that market and so equilibrium in the short run and the long run we have to see uh, in a monopolistically competitive market a monopolistically competitive firm in the short run and long run because the firm is the only producer of its brand like uh, every every firm is producing its own brand uh, like uh, pepsi coca-cola uh, colgate uh, sensodyne so these are all uh, because the firm is the only producer of its brand uh, it faces a downward sloping uh, dem demand curve uh, so price exceeds marginal cost and the firm has a monopoly power so in the short run uh, we see here like this graph is representing uh, we are producing or the monopolistically competitive uh, firm is producing to the point where marginal cost is equal to minor revenue which is a short run as are represented short run and by this way we determine the quantity and with this quantity when we extend this quantity uh, to the demand function we can determine the price just like a uh, monopoly and at this price the average total cost is this and by this way this yellow shaded area is a profit for a monopolistically competitive firm <clears throat> Uh, when we compare it uh, yeah, and when we compare it this short run in, in the long run situation, so definitely entry and exit is free. So whenever uh, this type of economic profit exists in the market, what is going to happen? Uh, new firms enter with their own product, uh, but, they, but these products are substitute for the existing firms. So when the new firms enter, what is going to happen? The demand for this particular product, because whenever there's a new product, so they have a new characteristics or attributes and, and new features in it. So by this way, what is going to happen? Uh, the demand for this particular pro product or a particular firms go down. When the demand goes down, so minor revenue further go down and the uh, price is going to reach to the level where it is equal to average total cost. And by this way, you can see that in the long run, the firms have no economic profit, zero economic profit. Uh, and uh, uh, also we can see that the firms are not operating at a point where it is minimum. The average total cost is minimum. So they are producing less than uh, the point where uh, the firms are achieving their capacity, where the average uh, total cost is minimum so in the long run describes in part one price equals average cost so the firms earns zero economic profit even though it has a monopoly profits so what we can make it here uh, which we have to uh, understand uh, in the long run monopoly can earn economic profit monopolistic competition or a perfectly competitive market so these two competitive markets one is perfect competition and the other one is monopolistically competitive market they both earn zero economic profit in the long run so only monopoly has the power monopoly a pure monopoly the pure monopoly has a power that they can earn economic profit in the long run so you can see here that uh, this is a competitive market because you see uh, we are producing uh, in this firm the uh, the firm is producing at a point where average total cost is at its minimum but this is for a competitive market but at the same time if you look uh, compare with the monopolistic competitive market so firm is producing till this point so we uh, this point reflects that the firm is not operating at its capacity or at the point where the average total cost is minimum. <clears throat> so under perfect competition, price equals marginal cost. The demand curve facing the firm is horizontal. So the profit, a zero profit point occurs at the point of a minimum average cost. Minimum average cost. This is the point on the average cost curve. On the other hand, uh, under monopolistic competition, price exceeds marginal cost like a monopoly. So thus there is a dead weight loss as shown by a yellow shaded area. This one is the dead weight loss under monopolistic competition. The demand curve is downward sloping. So the zero profit is to the left of the point of a minimum average cost. 
in both types of market entry occurs until profit are driven to zero as i mentioned in the long run both uh, markets uh, firms in both the markets are earning zero economic profit so is monopolistically competitive has a socially undesirable market structure that should be regulated the answer for this reason is probably no uh, the <clears throat> the reason behind this is that we cannot say that uh, we can uh, uh, regulate or uh, it's not desirable from the society point of view in most monopolistically competitive market monopoly power is small the power of a monopoly is very small if they increase the price of their product uh, because the close substitutes are available so uh, the buyer or the consumers want to shift to the other product so they have a monopoly power but the power is very small so usually enough uh, firms compete with brands that are sufficiently suitable so that no single firm has a much monopoly power so any resulting deadweight loss will therefore be small so if the power is small so the deadweight loss is also small and because firms demand curves will be fairly elastic average cost will be close to the minimum not so uh, not exactly the minimum but close to the minimum means the deadweight loss is less uh, the another point uh, which makes the, uh, the monopolistically competitive market uh, uh, as not uh, desirable or undesirable from the society point of view is an inefficiency must be balanced against an important benefit from monopolistic competition is a product diversity that because very close substitutes are available it means we have a lot of options available. Uh, you can see in a case of a soft drink market so we have a lot of uh, variety of products although they are very close like these are soft drinks uh, but we can drink any uh, so monopolistically competitive market benefit the society in the way it it gives the um, society variety uh, yeah there there is inefficiency inefficiency in in the sense that the firms are not operating at a minimum co uh, average total cost uh, so there is a deadweight loss but that deadweight loss is bearable and accommodated in the society because the society is getting variety in the sense so most consumers will value the ability to choose among a wide variety of competing products and brands that are different in various ways so the gain from product diversity can be a large and may easily outweigh the inefficiency cost uh, resulting from downward sloping demand so that's the way that we cannot uh, simply say uh, that uh, monopolistically competitive uh, market is also like a monopoly is undesirable from the society point of view no the society is getting better uh, and have a uh, option of using variety so monopolistic competition in the market for colas are and coffee so we can see the market for soft drinks and coffee illustrate the characteristics of a monopolistic competition each market has a variety of brands that differ slightly but are close substitute for one another and we can see here uh, co for the colas rc cola coke uh, we can see the elasticities of the demand for rc cola uh, is 2.4 and for coke is 5.2 to 5.7 uh, on the uh, and similarly for a coffee brand Folgers uh, 6.4, Maxell uh, House 8.2 and Chalk Full or Nuts 3.6. Although if you look at the, uh, the overall uh, elasticity of demand for the cold drink in general, uh, with the exception of RC Cola and uh, Chalk Full or Nuts, all the colas and coffees are quite price elastics with the elasticity uh, elasticity is on the order of minus 4 to minus 8 each brand has only limited monopoly power so this is typically of a monopolistic competition so in this part we just discuss uh, the monopolistically competitive market